You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard in your entire life of test driving a phone network? Well, now you have, because U.S. Cellular is going to let you test drive their network for free for 30 days. So anywhere you go where you got some dead spots, where your service isn't super strong, you're trying to listen to the podcast and it drops out when you go here because you got no internet service anymore, real simple. Just whip out your phone, do a little beep boop bop boop, that's you pushing the buttons to go to the right place, and you can get the app and try it out for yourself. So go ahead and test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network free for 30 days. That's U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply, awards based on open signal independent data. So go to uscellular.com for all the details. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident panelist, as always, Ryan Schlipp. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore daddy. So today I want to start off with a teensy bit of news. There's not a huge amount out there, but there's a couple uh, things going on. And then just kind of roll that into a few questions that are left over, and then we'll see where we're at. Also, I'm planning on... Not that it'll super impact you today, but I'm planning on pre-recording tomorrow's podcast because we are going camping. So if there's any major news that happens today or early tomorrow or whatever, or any time tomorrow, it's not going to be in tomorrow's podcast. With that said, the one reason it may impact you is because my family will be waking up not too long from now and saying, can we go camping, let's get going, what are we sitting around for? So we're probably going to be doing um, slightly shorter than normal. 25 30 ish instead of 45 ish so that's the plan once again ladies and gentlemen we are eight itunes reviews away from uh, giving away a pff edge subscription if you have the time if you're interested in helping out the podcast and helping out one lucky person head on over to itunes if you can if you use it if not i would appreciate a stitcher review or anywhere else you can think to leave them there's not a lot of places that do Uh, i usually use uh google um, and I also recently switched over to PodCoin. I know that was an ad, and you usually don't do what ads say, but I actually kind of like PodCoin, and one of the coolest things about it, I can actually see who's listening. So I, it's like, oh, I know these guys. What up, David? However, I don't see a way to um, leave a review, but that's fine. But anyways, anywhere that you can do it would be greatly appreciated. I'm just about getting the word out, man. That's what it's all about. Otherwise, be sure to check the link in the description there. Lots of ways to help me out, lots of ways to help yourself out. Uh, Specifically, make sure you get into the Facebook group. I really, really enjoy that group. Um, It's one of the only groups that I'm aware of that has basically no issues. I'm sure someday there will be something, and something's going to happen, and people are going to be crying, and I don't know. I'll tell them I don't care and grow up, because that's what I've (laughs) I've done in my other groups. I got an NFL draft group. I had a kid come over to me and say that this guy was being a jerk, and I should kick him out, and I was like... I could, or maybe you could just grow up and grow a pair. He didn't appreciate it, but I mean, seriously, grow up. Why are you tattling? Get out of the guy. So what? Anyways, I mean, I agree I don't like the guy, but so what? Now watch, I just open the floodgates in the Facebook group. Everyone's going to be like, he doesn't care. I'm going to be super obnoxious now and make everybody mad. I will kick you out. Just on principle that you're taking advantage of me now, I will kick you out. Anyways, um, let's just take the break and start talking football, because I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. You get to 450-ish episodes, and it's like, I'm just... By the time we get to 600 episodes, this is going to be like a cooking podcast. We're just going to be talking about different stuff. And you want to lightly squeeze the lemon on there. It'll be some sweet taquitos, man. Anyways, we'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen... Let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard in your entire life of test driving a phone network? Well, now you have, because U.S. Cellular is going to let you test drive their network for free for 30 days. So anywhere you go where you got some dead spots, where your service isn't super strong, you're trying to listen to the podcast and it drops out when you go here because you got no internet service anymore, 
Real simple. Just whip out your phone, do a little beep boop bop boop. That's you pushing the buttons to go to the right place. And you can get the app and try it out for yourself. So go ahead and test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network free for 30 days. That's U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply, awards based on open signal, independent data. So go to uscellular.com for all the details. First of all, let's start off with the news that Mr. Capri Bibbs was cut. Um, I know that this isn't super significant information, but I am a little bit upset for Capri. I know it was a long shot. He was kind of picked up late in the season. He's one of those guys where, I mean, he was like the sixth running back we'd picked up over time, just trying to find people to replace, whatever. It's one of those revolving door situations where you know he's going to come in, you know he's going to go out, but I was really pulling for him. I don't know if you remember or if you've been listening long enough. I did kind of a long uh, deal on Capri Bibbs and how he was a, a Packers fan. And I felt, you know, I, I grew up in Illinois, a massive Packers fan, as did he. All right, there was that story about him um, back in Chicago where he wanted to be a part of the action in a uh, it was a Packers-Giants playoff game. So... <laughs> The dude turns off the heat in his house, opens up all the windows, rips his shirt off, and imagines himself being at the game. He says, quote, I had my whole house mad. I sat in in the front room with no t-shirt, just shorts on, had the whole house freezing in the wintertime, and I said, all right, if the Packers got to go through it, then I got to go through it. It just just feels like he's family, you know? Like this dude, he's one of us. He is. I mean, he's he's a football player. He's in the NFL. I, I don't know. You always wonder, like, you know, outside of the Packers, are there anybody is that you're a fan of? And there are people that I like and that I respect, but Capri Bibbs is somebody I'm rooting for. Because he's, again, he's just a dude that grew up a massive, freakish Packers fan. Maybe even bigger than I am, which I don't even like to admit. I've never done, well, I wouldn't be allowed to do anything like that. I wouldn't have just got finger-waving and, and disapproving looks. Come on now, Ryan. Please turn the heat. And No, I would have got smacked. And then I wouldn't have been allowed to watch the football game. So it would have been a little counterproductive. But again, even though I kind of knew that this was coming, it still is like, oh man, I was kind of rooting for the guy, you know. Would have been nice to see him have somewhat of a role on this team, or at least be on the roster through the season. But hopefully he can get on his feet and uh, make some money somewhere. I just Twitter stalked him. He's trying to get into rapping, or, uh, you know, trying trying to do that a little bit. So hopefully the football thing works out for him, though, because... I don't know. I, I, what do I know about rap? I don't know. I've heard a lot worse stuff than what's on his Twitter profile that um, has made people multimillionaires. So maybe he's got a shot at that too. I, You know, whatever. Uh, another somewhat minor but uh, interesting detail is Michael Cohen is leaving. I don't know exactly what he's doing. Going somewhere to the East Coast, I guess. It kind of stinks. Uh, I don't necessarily think he's a great orator. But I did like his podcast as far as the information. And for me, I will take good information from somebody who's really dry. As a matter of fact, almost all the podcasts I listen to are really, really dry speakers. But I just like their takes on things and everything else. The ones I avoid are people like me who ramble or have fake radio voices just saying, I'm not pointing anybody out. I'm just saying I can't get past that. Like, just talk normal. But you think Packers Unscripted, really hard to listen to Spofford, 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 whatever. But it's usually pretty good information, and it's bullet points, right? Here's what happened this week, etc. That's fine. And I think that's kind of what Michael Cohen was. He also had a lot of uh, access, so he had information that I didn't always know, and he had uh, interviews with people that I could never get interviews with. So I thought it was a good resource, and I especially liked him on Twitter. Um, he just had a lot of good inform I mean he's he's one of my favorite follows as far as just getting instant and relevant information. I mean I know he's a really big soccer fan which made me not appreciate him very much. I'm just just kidding. But I didn't I didn't see like everybody else was they're talking about basketball and soccer and women's soccer and everything else that's going on. Like every sport that comes up we gotta talk about it. I and mean, we gotta have an opinion on everything. It's like dude I I'm following you for one reason. I can't tell you how many people I've unfollowed which it's fine if you want to talk about whatever. I just I'm not going to follow you because I'm strictly here to hear find out about the Packers. But that kind of stinks. I, I feel like he was one of the better resources um, all around as far as you know, podcasting, writing, Twitter, everything. So I gotta kind of have a new go-to, and I don't know who that's going to be. I would ask for suggestions, but I probably already know most of the people. I guess if you've got one that I probably don't know of, let me know. 
as far as the big names I already know. But actually, that, that would be a good idea. Why don't, why, don't, why don't we do that? Why don't we have a moment? Let me know, you know, websites, blogs, podcasts, um, people on Twitter, people on Facebook, people anywhere you know that you enjoy that is Packers. Uh, I don't know about NFL. That's opening up a pretty big... I mean, if, if there's somebody really awesome that isn't super well-known, I mean, there's already like seven, probably more than that, um, NFL podcasts that I'm already subscribed to. Also, NFL Draft and everything else. Just just whatever resources you have that are awesome that you think I might not know about, just let me know. Especially Packers, though. Um, the last bit of news I wanted to talk about now, and there's a lot of little stuff as far as... I think I'll, I'll save a separate podcast for rumors and who's doing well and who's doing not, because I think it's mostly nonsense. Not that it's complete nonsense, but it's it, it sort of... In the this period of the season, you're only looking at, you know, what, 5% of a guy's game... So if, if somebody's doing really well, that's awesome. That means they're excelling at this 5%. But we've got 95% still to uncover. You know, a, a massive part of that is going to be putting the pads on. That's going to change the dynamic massively. And then on top of that, you've got an actual game which changes things. You've got just different layers that get added on that you've got to be able to, you know, whatever. Like, for example, and I, again, I don't want to get into it, um, but David Bakhtiari said he would really like Rashawn Gary. Now, fortunately, he was very careful with his words, unlike everybody else who just kind of keeps it vague and allows people to think that they're freakishly awesome. But essentially what he did is he highlighted what we already know and said, this is really awesome. But he, he kind of left the caveat on there that we got to see if he's any good at football. Now, he said, you know, I, I, I could see why he was drafted early, super fast, super strong and athletic and all that stuff. So I'm excited to see why uh, he was drafted so high. But he never even went on to say he's a good football player because he doesn't know, because nobody knows. And that's kind of the point. All right, there's a difference between athletic, and, and we know this. I'm just trying to say when we see stories like this, like, uh, let me let me just see here. Uh, David Bakhtiari, excited to see more from Packers rookie Rashawn Gary. That's not a bad title. There's nothing wrong with that title at all. It's not misleading. But I just want to make sure that we don't see that and think automatically like, oh man, David Bakhtiari is the best left tackle in football, and he really likes Rashawn Gary, therefore we know Gary's going to... No, man, come on. Most of you already know this, but if you're new to the game, don't go down that path. I mean, you can, it's fun, but just understand that you're just playing a fun game. You know, there's nothing wrong with just getting yourself hyped up about how great this team's going to be and everything, but at some point, come back to reality. Because actually, now that I think about it, this article by Zach Cruz, and Zach Cruz is pretty good too as far as Twitter and all that. I don't read very many articles, but I know he writes a lot. But he's, he's actually, the title is very specific in what he's saying, which is not that he's good. He's excited to see more, which is exactly correct. But if you look at what he did say, what Bakhtiari did say, big, athletic, great first step. I can see why he was drafted. And he's, then he says, um, I've appreciated what I've seen from Gary so far, which again, very tiny window. But if you look at, you know, the, the, the second portion of what he said, uh, while it's early, I'm excited to see him when he gets his pads on and see how he can play and where his game truly shows up. This is only part of it. Uh, when you get the full pads on, you can really see what an individual is all about. So far, I've appreciated what I've seen from Gary. So again, I like the athleticism, right? I mean, it, and it, it, it jumps out. Even when you're watching him and you think he's not playing very well, you can still see the athleticism. The bigger question is going to be, can he do anything with it? Athleticism has almost nothing to do with you being a good football player, right? I mean, it's, it's maybe a precursor, it's hard to be a good football player without being athletic. I mean, even not athletic football players by basic human standards are freaks. But it's not just a matter, it's not a direct relationship. So um, I guess I'm just saying we got to be careful with this kind of stuff because we don't know anything about anyone. And that includes guys like Marquez Valdez-Scantling, Geronimo Allison, like the big names we've been hearing a lot about how great they are, right? I mean, it, it's, it is good and it's not a lie. It just means that, you know, it, it's kind of like if you're taking the ACT or the SAT or whatever you took. I didn't take the SAT. I took the ACT. But you know how there's separate tests? It's kind of like you did one portion and you aced it, right? It'd be like me doing math first. And it's like, wow, that was pretty good, man. And then after that, we went on to like, I don't know, reading. <laughs> like, read this and tell me what it said. And it's like, I don't know, man. I read it. And um, all I remember is thinking about football. So I'm guessing this book is probably about the Packers. Does anyone else have that superpower, by the way? 
the ability to actually read even out loud and be thinking about something else the whole time, that was me in school. Like, read this out loud and tell me what it says. I read the whole thing out loud, and I have no idea what it said because I was thinking about something else as I was reading. I feel like that's a superpower. Maybe everyone does that. I don't know. What was that paragraph about, Ryan? I don't know. I was thinking about uh, telling myself that I need to pay attention. It's like an out-of-body experience. Which, by the way, is the worst superpower ever. I have the ability to be stupid in extraordinary ways. Anyways, let's get to the thing I wanted to talk about. Because that was not the thing. That was me telling you why we're not talking about that today. So I want to actually play the audio just so we're clear on what exactly was said. Because I'm... I'm I don't know, it, it's hard when you're here, right? I'm sitting in my basement in Madison, Wisconsin. I don't know what's going on up there in Green Bay. But just hearing it makes my skin crawl. And again, maybe this is just something being blown way out of proportion. And there's, I think in my opinion, and I'll explain what that is, a very easy way to mitigate this. But just the way it was said is like, God, that just sounds horrible. But let me play this for you real quick. This is Michael Silver talking about uh, Matt LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers and the scheme and their relationship, etc., etc. Well, it is an adjustment, Andrew, and Aaron Rodgers, for the first time in his career, is going to run a different system. So you have Matt LaFleur, who originally came out of the Kyle Shanahan tree, and Aaron Rodgers said he's excited about what this offense will be able to do. He said this offense really stretches the defense with formations and motions and tempo. It really tests the eye discipline of a defense. So he's excited about that, and it will look different. What he's less excited about is the potential for surrendering uh, or mitigating a skill that he is very, very well versed in, and that is checking off at the line of scrimmage and audibilizing into ideal plays. In the past, in the offenses Matt LaFleur has been a part of and in that Kyle Shanahan tree, the quarterback has not gotten a ton of freedom at the line. Sometimes there are two potential calls based on what they see, but usually with formation-specific calls, there's not a lot of built-in ability to audibleize. And so now you have the push and pull, and Aaron Rodgers is, uh, you know, he's pretty steadfast in his desire to retain that prerogative. He, he told me, I don't think you want me to turn off 11 years. There's stuff that not many people in the league c can do at the line. That's not a humble brag. That's just a fact. So when it comes to that, I'm sure Matt will be happy when I do it and it looks the right way. So keep an eye on, on this as the offseason develops and we head into trade again. So here's my thought on this. And there's a couple opposing dynamics. Um, supposedly, at least according to Silver here, the, the scheme itself does not really allow much flexibility for quarterbacks. On the other end, Aaron Rodgers expects total autonomy at the line of scrimmage. Now, it's the tail end of what was said there that really kind of bothered me. And again, maybe this is just him goofing around. I'm, I'm assuming or at least hoping that they're having open dialogue between Lafleur and Rodgers. And this isn't Rodgers just basically going to the media and saying like, oh, yeah, you know, he thinks I'm going to do this, but uh, I'm just going to do whatever I want. But that's essentially what it sounded like. Because he's we're talking about Lafleur saying, you will not have control over this. And then at the very end of what Silver said, Rodgers said, He's going to love it. In other words, I'm not supposed to, but I'm going to do it anyways, and he'll learn to appreciate that. I'm making those words up, but I'm just, there's only one other way that I could really come to understand that, and that is that they came to an agreement that um, Rogers is just going to do whatever he wants, even though that's not how this is supposed to work, and I don't really like that either. I think this is very simple. Regardless of the scheme, this is how I see any time you have somebody as talented as Rodgers and a new scheme coming in. It's very simple in my mind. Maybe I'm missing something. New coach comes in with the new scheme. He says, your freedom at this point is zero because you don't know what you're doing. You don't understand the concepts. You don't understand the plays. You don't understand any of it. As we go through and you do what you're told, you can start making observations. You can start talking to me and saying, in this situation, I think we should have done this. And then we start slowly giving you more and more responsibilities. Let's let you test some stuff out. And then as you audible out of that play and you do something that I think is dumb, I'm going to call you out and say, listen, this is why I called the play because of this, this, and this. You changed it thinking it was this, that, or the other. But here's the thing. You're not understanding the reason why I called it and it's this. 
you sit at that level of him having very limited responsibilities until he starts to get it, and then him changing the play becomes a benefit, and then you slowly keep adding and adding more and more to him. Because it's a, it's ultimately a benefit. If we're talking about a, a scheme, um, scheme-heavy offense that is predicated on taking advantage of defense's weaknesses, having somebody like Rodgers is incredibly valuable. Because he's reading the defense, he knows what they're doing, and if, if LeFleur calls a play, you know, just because it's, you know, third and seven and it's situational play call, and Rodgers looks at the defense and says, okay, this is what the defense is doing, based on our concepts and our schemes, if we do this, we'll kill them. We want him to be able to to change the play. I want him to. I think LeFleur should want him to. It's just, there's, there's two opposing sides. There's, I don't want him touching my stuff, and then there's, I want to be able to do whatever I want to do because I'm a super genius. His words, not mine. And I really think the answer is somewhere in between, but I think we start on LaFleur's side. Until you understand this, and Rodgers does not yet, you kind of just need to shut your mouth and do what you're told. And I understand that you're a big shot, but guess what? I'm 32, I have to go to work, I have to do what I'm told all day long. Pretty much everybody that's listening to this podcast that isn't self-employed has to do what they're told all day long. And even if you're not self-employed, you have to go home and you have a wife who tells you what to do. At some point in your life, you get told what to do and you just deal with it. Police calls, pulls you over and tells you to get out of the car. Guess what you're going to do? You're going to get out of the car. You just do what you're told in certain situations. Grow up, that's life. I understand you've been playing football for a whopping 11 years, and you're in your 30s, which in NFL years is basically like 75. And I know you make a lot of money, and you're very important, and everybody likes you and wants to be around you and wants to be you and praises you on national television, but you're going to need to be a little bit humble here. I love Aaron Rodgers, and I agree with him that we do not want to take away one of the most valuable assets, which is his ability to read and pick apart defenses. But he's got to play by the rules at least for a while until he understands and let this be a progression as opposed to him just stepping to the line and taking over, because what he's going to do is take over and bring us back to McCarthy's old scheme. What he knows is how to manipulate things based on what he and McCarthy built over 11 years, not LaFleur. This is a different different understanding of how things work and why and until he understands that it needs to be a slow progression give him a taste give him some opportunities to change things and if it's just working brilliantly as the lads across the pond would say then yeah just keep feeding them man i don't think it's a bad thing for him to be able to to do that because of the fact that he's making changes after the defense starts showing again LaFleur is calling the play before he can see what the defense is doing. Rodgers is making a change after he sees what the defense is doing. Not that he knows 100%, but based on film study and whatnot, he probably has a pretty decent idea. So it's, it's, it's sort of ideal to be able to have the quarterback at the last minute survey the, the landscape and, and make a, a change. But it needs to be gradual. And, the, and again, the last part of that quote, which was essentially, don't worry, he's going to love it, I don't know. Again, I'm not trying to make a big drama thing out of this because I don't understand the exact dynamic. I don't know that, you know, because essentially what he's saying, talking about Silver, is that typically LaFleur does not give a lot of freedom to quarterbacks. Maybe he's throwing that out the window because this is Aaron Rodgers. This isn't Marcus Mariota. This isn't Jared Goff. So maybe he is giving him more freedom. So I'm not I'm not trying to create this sensationalized drama that everybody else in this quote-unquote industry likes to do. By the way, as a parting message to Michael Cohen, if he happened to be listening, please don't go out to the East Coast and call in all your contacts to create some spectacularly garbage article about how there's some controversy that you've been that you've uncovered and blah blah. Just, just go away gracefully, please. We like you. Go have a great career over there. Enjoy your life. Don't come back and start trouble. It's been played out, man. All right, just leave it alone. But that's sort of my thought on it. I want Aaron Rodgers in control of the offense. I do. But I want it to be on LaFleur's terms. I want LaFleur to be the one that has the the leash, the one that slowly releases it. And if he decides to take the leash off, that's on him. That's entirely up to LaFleur, not Aaron Rodgers. And I also don't want LaFleur caving on this. I don't want him just going, well, you know, I mean, he's Aaron Rodgers, and I want to have a good relationship, so I guess I'll just let him. No, have a backbone. Tell him no. You're, you're not going to call an audible because you don't know what you're doing. You're a really smart quarterback, but when it comes to my playbook, you're a dummy. And I don't want a dummy running my offense. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. I mean, it's, again, it's early. You know, the positives don't necessarily mean anything. The negatives don't necessarily mean anything. But, I mean, I, 
as I talked about a long time ago and has been said several times, this is one of the more important dynamics as far as the Packers having a successful season, several seasons, whatever. This needs to work. And um, Rodgers playing by the rules and and Lafleur sticking by his guns and saying, this is the way it needs to be. I was hired for a reason. We're not going to take this back to McCarthy's scheme just because that's what you're comfortable with. That was broken and didn't work. Everybody's just got to be on the same page, and ego is going to kill this thing. And as much as I think that, you know, I don't, I don't mind somebody being having a little bit of an ego if it's earned and deserved, right? Aaron Rodgers coming out and just saying, listen, I'm, I'm very good at this, and taking away my power, all, all that stuff. He's earned the right to say he's very good at stuff because he is, but he still needs to have the ability to be humble and realize, in this case, he's a dummy. He's still learning. He needs time to grow in it. He needs to trust that Lafleur knows what he's doing. Rodgers does not. And I just hope that that's the dynamic and that this little quote is just a little misleading. And and maybe that's what he needs. Maybe that's what Rodgers needs is for some somebody to come in and say, look, we're going to rein this in a little bit. Because even in McCarthy's case, it's hard to even have a scheme or a game plan or anything of structure when you got a quarterback that says, in this one instance, I know the best play. And it becomes a series of plays as opposed to a a game plan, an overall plan, especially when you have a a, uh, a scheme that is predicated on, you know, like jab, 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 hook, right? We're trying to set stuff up. We're trying to lay a groundwork so that when they see us line up like this, they think we're going to do this, and then we do that just to kind of, I can't set anything up if you keep changing the plays. And I really don't think it's that big of a deal, especially if LaFleur is willing to be receptive to some degree. In other words, again, the, the d- dynamic should be Lafleur calls the plays. Aaron Rodgers gives him, you know, productive criticism, constructive criticism. Either way, going back and saying, "Here's what I think we should have done and why," and then work on it together. Again, Rodgers is a smart dude. He brings a lot to the table as well. But it's up to Lafleur how this offense runs, not Rodgers. Anyways, I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna get started on episode number two for tomorrow. You folks have yourselves a fantastic day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye.